Hi guys, welcome back to another Hugh Jeffries video. In this video, I'll be restoring the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra, Samsung's high-end Galaxy phone from 2020. This one's seen much better days. Just about every centimeter of this phone is either cracked, dented, or scratched. It also has not one, but three of those annoying magnetic car mounts glued to the back. Why would anyone need so many? I purchased it online for 120 Australian dollars or around 80 USD. When plugged in, it doesn't line up, but it's drawing around 500 milliamps. To fix it up, I'll of course be needing a new display and rear glass, but I've also decided it's worth replacing the original battery while I'm at it. I'll begin by first heating what's left of the rear glass on a heat plate before prying it off. While I'd usually use a suction cup and plastic pick to avoid damaging the frame or glass if it were intact, for this phone, we'll be replacing both, so it doesn't matter. Additionally, given just how shattered the glass is, a suction cup won't stick. Lifting up the back panel, we get our first look inside the S20 Ultra. I won't be throwing away the back panel just yet, as there's still a microphone attached to it that we'll need to salvage later on. First to come out is the wireless charging coil connected with one flex cable and five Phillips screws, one being hidden under the coil itself. Next is the upper antenna. Again, Samsung has been a bit sneaky and hidden a screw right next to the LED flash. With a proper look inside the S20 Ultra, we can see that it resembles both the layout of Samsung's before and after it. The most notable difference is the amount of space taken up by the mini cameras, especially the ultra zoom lens. Once I've disconnected all the flex cables running to the motherboard and unfastened two Phillips screws, it can be pulled out of place. Packed into this multi-layer, multi-section motherboard is an Exynos 990 with up to 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of storage. Proceeding with the repair, it's time for the lower section of the phone to come apart. The speaker, which houses a liquid indicator, appears to show liquid has entered the phone, but I'm not able to find any signs of damage. It's possible for these to be tripped by things like humid weather, so they're not always accurate. Just three screws is all it takes to get the USB-C charging board out of the phone. Then, using some alcohol, I can loosen up the vibration motor and break it free. Up top, we've still got the selfie camera, which is glued in place. Using an X-Acto knife, I'm able to cut through the adhesive and release the camera. And with that, the S20 Ultra has been disassembled. Compared to some phones, this was a walk in the park. All the screws we removed are the same type and length, making this process almost foolproof. Getting out the first of the new components, it's time we begin getting this phone back in one piece. The display, like most modern phones, is the most expensive part to replace, and is why many phones, once broken, never get repaired. Many just find it easier to replace the whole phone. I'll start by reinstalling the vibration motor and charging port. Once its screws are attached, it's time for two flex cables, the speaker, and its appropriate screws. Up at the top of the phone, it's time to get the front-facing camera reattached. I'll then be sure to remove any plastic film before installing the motherboard into the phone. Now comes time for the new battery. The original is in unknown condition, and while it would likely work, it's several years old, and like all batteries with age and use comes significant wear. If I'm working inside the phone, I might as well spend the $20 to replace the battery. Once it's in, I can reattach both charging port cables, the new display, and finally, the battery. Flipping over the phone, it's time for a test. Sure enough, the phone is working, but it's got a passcode on it. But don't worry, we'll wipe it later. I can now continue to assemble the phone, placing back the plastic antenna piece and the wireless charging coil.
Once it's back into position, the last thing we need to do is prep the new back glass. I'll need to salvage the microphone from the one we removed earlier and place it onto our new back glass. There was also a little foam grounding piece which I decided to transfer as well. Once the phone is free from any dust, I can remove the plastic protective film from the back panel and press it down into place, securing it to the frame of the phone. Before we can call this a finished repair, I need to wipe the previous owner's data from the phone. With the phone connected to a computer, I can hold both the power and volume up buttons. Once into recovery mode, I can factory reset the device. Now, the last thing left to do is remove the plastic protective film. And we're done. So this is it, a repaired Galaxy S20 Ultra. Once badly destroyed, it has been repaired to an almost brand new looking state. Like many of Samsung's flagship phones, it was fairly easy to repair, with the only real downside being the two hidden screws and the high cost of replacement displays. But nevertheless, this S20 Ultra is ready to serve its next owner. And on that note, this has been a huge Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, consider subscribing and check out the phone restoration playlist for more videos just like this one. And if you're looking for any used devices, be sure to check out my online store, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video, and I'll catch you guys next time.